Hi there, Lindsay here. Today we're going to paint this sunset using colored pencils and something fun and new that I have been excited to try for about a month, and that would be the powder blender for colored pencil. And I decided to treat myself to the powder blender, the touch up texture, the titanium white powder, and also the two fixatives that are offered by Brush and Pencil, as well as some sanded pastel paper because you kind of need that gritty surface in order for these products to work. Um, I I had kind of done a little experiment during Inktober with one of my sketches. It was a hand holding a macaron and um, I gessoed a scrap of matte board and used some pan pastel uh, blender, which is like a powder form because it's a pastel. And I did a painting like that and I really liked it. And I figured that's approximately what the powder blender would do. Um, I used the fixative that I had, which was not ideal for layering color pencil, but I wanted to see if I liked that technique and if it was going to be something I wanted to explore further. So I hemmed and hawed about buying this for a while, but then I told myself if I finish Inktober and I do a sketch every day and I complete it, then I will treat myself. And I did. And uh, Dick Blick had a 20% off coupon um, about two weeks ago. And so was it two weeks ago? It must have been on November 1st when I ordered this. So that was about a little over a week ago. So I ordered it and um, and so I'm playing with it for the first time today. It just came in the mail like two days ago. So um, I took half a sheet of the UART paper and because I got a pad of 10 and they were nine by 12 in size and I um, cut a sheet in half and then I took a little sliver off the edge for testing pencils and um, I'm working on that piece right there. Uh, I decided to use the pastel, sanded pastel paper so that I would have kind of the ideal conditions for this product because um, I just wanted to see uh, if it was really different than my kind of homemade version or, you know, just not homemade, but using the supplies I already had to approximate the effect or um, if I was really missing out on something. So I wanted to make sure I gave it the best chance. And I figured even if this um, wasn't for me, I definitely would use the fixatives and um, and the paper for pastels and whatnot. So I, I knew that it wouldn't go to waste. I apologize for my picture being kind of scooched down in the canvas a little bit and the picture frame, but it's going to be pushed up in just a second. So what I'm doing is I'm just coating the paper with colored pencils and I'm using my Art and Fly pencils because they are oil based and this product is designed to work with oil based pencils. So I didn't put any powder first. I just put the color down on the paper and then I used a sponge tool dipped in the powder blender to do the blending. So that was colored pencil and look how well it blends. Um, I know some artists to put the powder first and then put the colored pencil then put powder again but um, I tested it both ways and it seemed like it got more dusty when I put the powder on first and I think that um, Lisa over at Lacquery Fine Art doesn't put the powder at least from the the demo I saw her do it didn't seem like she put the powder on first she just went right in with the pencils and um, and it worked it seemed to work really well for her and I and honestly she's probably the main influence on me purchasing this because uh, I just adore her work and um, and I was really enjoying seeing what she was doing with the product so I wanted to try it so I, I used the paper she recommended and and uh, and everything so uh, I just wanted to give it a, give it a shot now I have not fixed this yet. I haven't sprayed it with anything and I'm seeing if I can get another layer on without spraying it. But um, I found that it really wasn't sticking and when I went to blend it I was wiping back to what I had originally put so I decided I would give it a spray of the texture fixative which is a workable fixative and just to see how different that was from the Krylon work workable fixative that I use. I typically don't use a lot of fixative in my work. Um, so it can last me ages, but a fixative with, that gives me extra texture, I was very interested in. So after I did the fixative, it did make the colors a little bit darker. Even though it said there was no shift, it did seem to intensify my colors a little bit, which is to be expected with any fixative. Uh, and I wanted some brighter white clouds. So what I'm using is this little, um, this is one of those Jane Davenport um, palette applicators. The little black one was anyway. I'm um, using some titanium white, which is a powdered titanium white to put in some clouds. And that's also a brush and pencil product. I think you could definitely use a pan pastel or a even sketch on with a stick pastel if you want to approximate this technique and not invest in the um, the powder blender products yet because I know it's a it's kind of a big it's kind of like if you give a mousse a muffin you know it's like okay I want this seven dollar little thing of powder blender to see if it works well if you get that then you need to have the fixative and if you get the fixative then you need to get the special paper to go with it and then you need the you know so it's kind of like if you give a mousse a muffin he's gonna want some jam to go with it you know and on and on and on if you're 
fan of those children's books. Like if you give a mouse a cookie, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. But anyway, it's one of those things where, you know, in for a penny and for a pound, you're going <laughs> to, I'm like, if I'm going to get the powder blender, then I'm going to get the other things to go with it to make sure I don't waste the $7. I'm going to spend 70 so I don't waste the $7. Um, based, but luckily there's 20% off on that anyway. Uh, so I thought, I just like, you know what, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to have fun with it. And, um, and I, I did, I did have fun with it. So what I'm really enjoying is the layering up and getting these misty effects that I wouldn't have thought would have been possible with colored pencil. Now, I also want to mention that you could always do um, pastels and colored pencils together. You might end up scraping up some of the pastels underneath if you don't have a proper fixative down, but it would give you a very similar effect. Uh, I am going in now and I'm adding some darks and the thing I should have been a little more cautious about, but like I said, I was just practicing. That's why I'm using my inexpensive Art and & Fly pencils instead of my polychromos because they're so inexpensive and I don't have to be precious about them, um, is that I should have probably put those darks in as dark as I wanted first before I did any of the lights because um, with opaque media, I find whites to be almost um, overpowering. Like when I'm using oils or pastels, it's like I want to kind of hold off and put those whites in last because they just gobble up everything. And, um, and that's kind of what was happening here. That titanium white powder I was using really covered up a lot and I was having a hard time getting my values dark enough in those really dark clouds in the back of the sky. I am so glad I chose a simple subject for the first time I was using this product because even though it was a simple subject, I found this plenty challenging working with this medium that I'm not um, very skilled with. So I had a lot of fun with it and I found like the sky, painting the sky was almost like looking at a real sky and things just would change and morph as I went along. But I really enjoyed the process. I did take a break. Um, my husband and I had plans to go out and get some lunch. So I took a break about halfway through this and uh, came back to it to put the finishing touches on. We're not to that point yet, but um, but I'm glad I did. I always think it's nice if you can kind of step away from your work before it's done and then evaluate it. Now here you can see how I those I was having a really hard time getting those darks as dark as I wanted. And I realized I just need to do a good coating of the um, texture fixative and let it sit. And this is at the point where I went to lunch and I came back. So this other product that I bought that was also the brush and pencil uh, product was called Touch Up Texture and you mix that, you can mix that with the titanium white, which I'm doing right there. That's that little nail polish bottle looking thing. And you can make a, like a, a basically a really white highlight paint. And um, the reason I got this rather than just using um, like uh, my bleed proof white or anything like that is because it's archival and it's not going to flake off the surface. Cause sometimes if I use gel pen in my mixed media work or even acrylic paint, and then I'm like, Oh, I want to go over that. I, and I go over it with pencil. I end up scraping it off sometimes. And I, and I just thought that was what it was. And that's, what you get. And then I learned from Lisa that you, that that won't scrape off. If you let it dry properly, it won't scrape off. And I'm like, Oh, I think I want to try that too. So, um, this pro and the other thing about that, this, that touch up texture, which is clear. If you get a spot in your painting and you have, um, like filled the tooth and it's all like waxy and you can't do anything, you can go over with that and kind of resurface the area so that you can lay more pigment down. And since I've had the issue in the past before, uh, I thought that, that would be really useful for me. Now what I'm doing here is I'm using different uh, gouache brushes or and brushes I would use for acrylic to just almost like a scumble on some of this color in the sky where it's kind of like you can see through the dark clouds and you're just getting this like break of bright sky. So I'm just trying to just dry brush that on so I don't have a really thick passage because I want my brightest highlight and focal point of the sky to be the clouds in the lower right hand corner. Um, but I did want to get that kind of um, burst of a little bit of a lighter value. And also I figure if I put that down there, since it's got the touch up texture product in there, I'm going to be able to layer over that with more colored pencil if I want to. And I'm just in an experimenting phase. I'm not worried about ruining this picture because it's, you know, it's nothing I was counting on being awesome anyway. I mean, I would have worked in a sketchbook if I had a sketchbook of this paper, but I don't. So I just taped it onto a clipboard so I could have a, a handy service to work on. Um, and it was neat. Now I did use a, a heat tool to dry this. I didn't have any problems with that. Um, I don't know if that's, if that's something you shouldn't do, but I didn't have any issues with that. And um, now I'm going in with some more pencil. This is actually a gold um, pencil from the Art and Fly set of 48. Um, I don't have as, you know, obviously if I had my polychromo set, I'd have a 
120 colors to work from, so I was working with this limited palette. Um, out of the 48 set, I probably used about 20 colors or so, but that gold was just the right value and tone that I wanted. Um, it's not a very metallic pencil, but it does give me the right the right tone. I was really impressed with these pencils, actually. I'd only used them briefly when I first got them. Um, and the thing is, the, the funny thing is, I don't use my polychromos very often because I use my pencils in a mixed media fashion. I use them over markers. I use them over watercolors a lot. I use them... Um, kind of as final touches and I don't tap, uh, and I tend to use them or I'll use them in rubber stamping projects and I'll use them on top of colored paper so any of the oil-based pencils I've ever used just don't seem to really pack a punch on the, the toned paper whereas the wax pencils are a little bit more opaque and they stand out better on the um, on the colored paper they just lay down a thicker coat and I like that um, so I didn't really use the art and fly pencils very much when I first got them because they weren't just because of the way that I use colored pencils they weren't as useful in my process as my tried and true Prismacolors but for this they were ideal and I'm so glad I grabbed them because I, I grabbed them because I knew they were oil-based pencils and I didn't want to wear down my polychromos too quickly while I was just learning what the heck I was doing. So um, so I would definitely recommend those if you want to try this and you're afraid to burn through your, your polychromos. I didn't know about light fastness with these. I do know the polychromos are pretty light fast, um, but heck, I'm practicing, so I'm not going to worry about that. I did tack it up on my wall, so I'll see if it fades. <laughs> I don't know if I would notice. I guess I'd have to cover up part of it. I've got so much pencil on this, though, I'd be very surprised if it faded. <laughs> you could really put a lot of layers on this uh, sanded paper. Uh, and I'm still layering up. I'm really pleased with how much I can layer up on this. I think I only used two coats of the workable fix fixative through this because I put that first layer down pretty thickly and blended it and, and then put a coat. And then um, I kind of bopped around here and there on the painting. I think there are several uh, points in this painting where I could have just said, yep, I'm done. But I really wanted to push it and see how many layers I could get. Um, it was really kind of, uh, I don't want to say nerve wracking because I wasn't really worried about this because I didn't really have any expectations for it. But it was kind of um, a little weird to go in there over those yellows with my violets and magenta and purples so I was kind of afraid of getting mud but there were some really dark uh, areas that were kind of muddy that I wanted to define uh, so this area in here gave me a little challenge because there were there was kind of like some fluffy wispy white clouds and then there were these really dark purpley clouds and you're also seeing a little bit of sky with no clouds kind of like in between some wispy far away clouds and to capture that ethereal look was quite um, quite difficult and this was kind of a little bit of a leap of faith was adding some black to the sky which I typically don't use black when I'm painting but um, but I really wanted that dark dark value and um, like I'm going to go back to like I really like Lisa from L Lacry Fine Arts work and she uses black all the time she just mixes it with stuff I'm like I'm gonna I'm going for it I'm gonna try it I'm gonna see what happens and um and I did that. I added some black in the sky. Now, towards the end, as I was feeling like I was going to be about done, I did go in and add some Prismacolor pencil. I don't know if I've done it yet uh, because the Prismacolor pencils are just a little bit more... Uh, a little bit stronger. Um, I was noticing though, as I was starting to layering, I think I was um, layered the black on. I think I was getting to the point where maybe the paper was saturated or maybe I pressed too hard with the pencils. I'm not sure. Uh, or maybe I got too much of the powder in there, but I was starting to see a grain on the paper up there. Um, and I definitely noticed more of the grain when I went in with the Prismacolor. So I'm going in with the Prismacolor white now because it's such a strong white. And I'm using that to define some of the really bright highlights and also to burnish in with some of the other colors where I'm seeing a little bit too much grain um, because I'm curious as to see what it would do because I know you're not really it's not really designed to use this product with the wax pencils but I'm not going to blend over it I figured I'm just going to I'm going to do these final layers and use the wax pencils and um, get my values right get any burnishing and blending that I want where I want the colors to stay really concentrated um, and I'm doing that with the wax pencils because I know that it should still, I should still be able to layer that on top of the oil because they are a softer pencil. Uh, so it's kind of like fat over lean with oil painting. You've got soft over hard for colored pencil, at least in the color pencils, like how much I've used with it, like traditional pencils, I'd start with my drier, harder pencils, and then I would work my way up to my softer um, pencils that laid down more pigment because if I went in with the softer ones first then it would like fill the tooth and then it would just be too slick to get anything else down. Um, 
So I figured I could go in there with my indigos and my blacks and my magentas and um, get those values. And I was able to go and get my values with the indigo and the black that I wanted to in those clouds that were really high up. So I'm glad I did that. Um, I'm a little bumped out with the grain. You could probably see, like if you look up at the center, of the top of the painting. Can you see that grain where the black is? It was starting to happen before I brought in the wax pencils, but it definitely was um, was intensified. It's kind of like if you, um, if you put, say if you put powder on your face, if you're, if you wear makeup, you put powder on your face and then you try to put, um, like a liquid make makeup over it. Like maybe you've already done your makeup for the day, but then you're, you're gonna go out and you don't wanna redo your makeup, so you just kinda touch up and you try to put some foundation on over where you have powder, and sometimes you'll get that, your your powder and blush or whatever underneath would just kinda ball up, so you just have to wash your face and start over. That's kinda what was happening up there on the top. I was getting kind of the wax was kind of starting to ball up a bit. So I did take some powder blender and go in there, and I was able to smooth it out a little bit, but, um, I probably should have just done fixative and I, I don't know, maybe use some black pastel up there. I'm not sure what the um, uh, what the best practice for that would have been, but I, the, probably the best practice for that would have been going darker in the beginning and not adding any of that white, uh, that titanium white until I was sure that I had my dark values in. Now I'm just finishing up with some of the titanium white powder on a makeup applicator and just hitting the highlights. I'm trying not to overdo it because I don't want to have to go back in and readjust the shadows. And after that pass through with the powder, I'm just going to grab my white pencil and define any lines that need it. And I'm calling this picture done. I could fuss with it more. Um, I could have stopped, you know, 30 minutes ago, but um, I think now at this point I have learned all I'm gonna learn from this piece and I'm looking forward to trying this product again on some other uh, subject matter. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I will link up all the products that I used and you can learn more about it. I'll also link to the brush and pencil website. I'm not affiliated, they have no idea I'm making this video, but it was really fun and I enjoyed this project. I'll link up to Lisa's channel too in case you wanna see her tutorials. And if you like this, please give me a thumbs up before or you go and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.